dry eyes there are in here. Probably not too many. Yeah. Well, um, again, it's quite a different episode than normal. Uh, the whole thing was following a series of conversations. Uh, based on the title of the episode and the scripture, I imagine you would have expected an episode watching Jesus heal and cast out demons. This is a great reminder, I think, of um, what the show was really about. The show was not actually called like The Life of Jesus or something. It's called The Chosen. And while Jesus is healing, the whole episode is focused on the disciples he's chosen. It, in a lot of ways, the show was really about the disciples with Jesus being obviously there, but it mostly tracks their story more than Jesus is in, in some ways. And I think this is a strong reminder of that. Um, but a powerful episode with a lot of stuff in their conversations to unpack or to, to think about. And then, of course, at the very end, when their conversation has really turned into full-blown just fighting, you know, uh, Jesus comes in and can't talk to them. He's absolutely exhausted. But just seeing him, I think, makes them all feel rather ashamed of where they let the conversation go and what some, what some of their words were. Um, there's so much that I could ask, so I, I'll, I'll start at the beginning, but if you have comments that want, that go to like more towards the end or the middle of the episode, feel free. We don't have to follow the order of the episode, but at the beginning, uh, the disciples are talking, and quite a bit of questions asked. Um, like Thomas is asking, is it Thaddeus, I think, who, who, um, who has like a, an injury? He's like, why, why hasn't Jesus healed you? I don't even know if you noticed in previous episodes that he has kind of a limp, but they talk about it here. Um, and then they start talking about things they've done in the past, little ways they've broken the law. They talk about the way they feel now. Uh, Andrew talks about how he feels like he's not really him. He's watching someone else's life, and he's just trying to be someone great when he knows he isn't. Um, any thoughts on, on any of that or, or anything else for that matter? But Barbara. Should come on in a minute. I just forgot my thoughts. It reminded me of um, <clears throat> people who become Christians later on, or, or just now starting to understand what Christianity is all about, and so they're reviewing their past, and you know they're in a room together talking about that stuff, and you know people who know you know you and stuff and well you were bad or you know and and uh, uh comparing their their sins sort of you know in their past and and still still t having questions about christianity about what um is what they should be feeling and stuff like when you come out of the waters of baptism uh you know you don't miraculously change you, there's no sudden feeling that you are this saved person that you don't look up and see a halo over your head and um, so it, to me the, all that whole conversation was just a conglomeration of what people think when they first become Christians who are, haven't you know been brought up into it or um, you know lived in Christian households or knew all those answers and stuff but, and then afterwards, you know, when they were talking about not forgiving Matthew, the, immediately I thought for sure when Jesus came back into the camp that they were going to ask him, how many times do I have to forgive my brother? You know, but I was surprised to see him just go walking there. I'm tired. <laughs> Some of those comments that they were saying I thought were so appropriate for, for reminding us what following Jesus can really be like for us human beings. I mean, there's things they don't understand. There's insecurities they feel about themselves, either because about their past or some of them feel insecure that they don't know the law, the scriptures well enough. Um, Andrew, I, I especially appreciate what Andrew said. He, he said he feels like he's living someone else's life, you know, and that um, and he didn't come out and say it, but it's almost like under the surface. He's like, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop and it be revealed that I'm not this, that, that I'm not a great follower of Jesus, you know. Um, or there's another one. Oh, Thaddeus, who's like, I'm afraid to tell him about my illness because he might think differently of me. You know, I mean, these really just, even seasons, you know, Christians for decades sometimes have these feelings, and 
um, insecurities and, and doubts, and uh, I, I appreciate that here, showing it here, because I'm sure the, the disciples would have felt some of these things, and uh, it's, re- it's a good reminder to me that those things are not contrary to being a good disciple of Jesus. You can be a follower and have these things, and it's a journey to work through them. Anyways, go ahead, Sean. Well, I was just thinking, there's the devil at work in that campfire as, was they, as they were getting angrier and angrier, and that's what the devil does. He works on our insecurities and our fears and our frustrations and, and, and magnifies them. I know he has in my life, uh, and it's taken me a while to learn how to handle some of the things that, I, that uh, life has thrown at me, and I think that that's and it just like I was just like scared. I'm like, he's there, he's there. Watch out, he's there. I mean, I, it may not be. That's just the take I I took for it. Well, I think it's a totally valid observation, though. I mean, clearly, God's not at work in that moment. <laughs> no. So who is at work? It's it's definitely the devil is glad to see them. I think get into it like that. And it's it's interesting that Jesus is over here casting out the powers of darkness. You know casting out demons and stuff. So he's like defeating evil. And over here, in a totally different way, Satan is actually still doing stuff. And that's that's the way it is in the world, right? I mean, good things can be happening maybe in one front of our lives or or as a church we may be doing some good things, but there doesn't mean there are little areas where sin can still take root in our lives or in the life of the whole church. Um, And so I think that's a good parallel to the way it really is. Kelsey. Well, first of all, I think it's super realistic that um, they're having these disagreements because they're so different from each other. They come yeah. from such different backgrounds. And I find it so interesting that uh, we tend to do this. We tend to think other people's sins are worse than ours. And yeah. so it's harder to forgive what feel like worse sins. And I do think that certain sins have deeper and more hurtful consequences yeah. than others. However, we're all sinners. And I think when you know, Peter was refusing to forgive uh, Matthew, and yet he was wanting forgiveness from yeah. um, James and John for what he had done. Yeah. And it's just this idea that we tend to want, we want, we want to be forgiven, or we, but we sometimes withhold that from others. It's just very, very humbling. Yeah. And then the other thing I just think it's interesting, and I think this is um, does follow like the biblical pattern where. Um, all the men were like quoting the scriptures of, you know, how God's going to, you know, come with the sword and overcome Rome. And then Mary Magdalene just comes out with this like very thoughtful response about we can't be holy without him. It's nothing to do with us. And it's just the idea that, you know, who was at the graveside, who believed, who saw him first, who was at the cross. It was the women. And I think that's really impressive that they're pulling this out that, the men are still confused, even seeing, they're like, why is he healing? Why, yeah. What's he doing? Why aren't we overthrowing Rome? And she's just like, well, maybe it's not about that. In, so in, an, iron, in an ironic way, and I'm not saying that, don't don't take this the wrong way, but it's, it's actually their knowledge of Scripture that's getting in the way. Like, they know Scripture, so they're saying, they're quoting Zechariah about what the Messiah's going to do, and that's what's blinding them from seeing what Jesus is doing. And I'm not saying, like, don't read your Bibles, but... Um, I thought it was interesting, at the beginning, Philip is talking with Matthew, and he says something like, I don't remember how he words it, but like, knowledge will not bring you closer to God. And when he said that, I thought, well, learning about Scripture it goes a long way. And in my mind, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I, that's my favorite line in the show. But um, as the show went on, I mean, these men who Mary expresses at one point, like, I'm trying to catch up. I look up to all of you. And they're the ones, the, the most ungodly in this thing and and um, Mary who is just watching Jesus, trying to follow Jesus, do what he says, even though she has quite a difficult past uh, she's perceiving some things that they're not um, yeah Ab- absolutely, yeah um, and I think that this episode is a good, good reminder of that uh, I saw a Daisy and then we'll go to Sue what comes to my mind is when we start using the I statements, when they started down that whole rabbit hole of, well, I thought this, you start digging into those thoughts of, oh, why did this happen here? Why did 
this happened to me type of thing. Mm. And you start moving away from God and Jesus and more towards yourself. Yeah. And so that's where we got to be careful with that is it's okay to reflect back on our life, but we can't let that define our moments now. Yeah. I don't know if this is exactly what you mean, but, um, you know, Jesus has called all of them, some of them from very d- difficult, dark backgrounds. And it's almost like they're still living in the, the mindset of like, some of us at least semi deserve to have been called. Like Peter's like, I didn't actually go through with my plan. Uh, Mary had things happen to her. Matthew, what is your excuse? Like, I think about underneath the surface is like, why are you worthy to be here? You know, if you have, if you have no slight excuse or explanation for your actions, then you shouldn't be in this circle of disciples right now. And, and you're right, that shifts the focus from what God has done for me to what have I done for God. Um, yeah. Sue? I think <clears throat> what really got me was Mary talking about Jesus when he was born, how she kept saying, you know, he needed me at yeah. that time. And then as he grew up, she felt like he didn't need her. Yeah. And yet there's the very end, yes. He did. So, you know, it's just how she must have felt to realize he still needs her. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a very powerful moment in the show. I'm not sure how to build on that because it is so powerful, but if anyone has any thoughts on Nathaniel. Well, I was just thinking through that that whole conversation as she was telling the story that it kind of plays into the... uh, if you've ever seen the Indiana Jones, uh, where they get the uh, the cup, the mm-hmm. chalice, yeah, whatever it is, the uh, just the moment there where they're picking out the most holy looking one, yeah. and you know that's not the right one. The the right one is the one that's meant for someone so humble. Yeah. And so as she was talking about how he came, you know how how the whole situation played out. It was so humble. He was cold. He needed her. Yeah. And, and you know, just like, like Sue said at the very end, you know, there, there's always a place for a mother in, yeah. in, in, in any child. And, yeah. you know, I, I was fortunate enough to grow up with a mother, and I really hurt for those who, who didn't have that opportunity. Um, but there, there's always a need in, in every human's heart for a mother. And there's always a need for a child in a mother's heart. Yeah. And yes, yes, this is a great reminder of the human side of Jesus. He comes just exhausted. He's been on his feet all day. Um, he's been doing a lot of great things. So obviously he's seeing a lot of joy. But even positive emotion for hours on end can be exhausting. And he's casting out demons. You know, he's also encountering like the forces of evil. So he has plenty of reasons to be exhausted. And he, yeah, it's a good reminder of the human side. Um, let's pass the microphone back to Joan. And while it's going, going back to what Sue said about uh, Mary still needing Jesus. You know, the Gospels don't give us a, a lot because um, it's, it's not written like a modern-day novel. So we don't follow, know much about Mary after her role in the story is kind of over. But, of course, she's one of the few at the cross. And there in John, Jesus takes care of his mother. You know, so he, he, uh, he clearly still honored her and... and um, and loved her, and he he turns her over to John. So, and that came to mind based on what you were saying, too. Joe, I, I've always wondered how the people back then that that saw Jesus's miracles didn't weren't in so awe, weren't so convinced that this was the Son of God because he was doing all these miracles right in front of them. Yeah. And I and I was watching this, and I was wondering why are all the apostles or disciples, you know, sitting around and relaxing while Jesus is working. Why aren't they there just watching him, just in awe of what he's doing? And, you know, worship, if they think he's really the Messiah, yeah. why weren't they there? And that's the thought that crossed my mind. Yeah. But I guess it's, they were being human. They were tired, they, you know, and they, they wanted to get away for a while, I'm sure, themselves. And I, I guess that was the whole point of it. But it did kind of raise, I thought, because you think if, I could be with Jesus today, and, and I well, would not leave aside for a minute. But, you know, we're, we're human, I guess. Yeah. Uh, two thoughts on that, Joan. One is, I, I wonder if, 
even when we see spectacular things on a regular basis, the amazingness of it can kind of wear off. And if they, they're around Jesus, hearing his teachings regularly, and they've seen other miracles, at some point they're like, all right, I know what he's doing. He's doing a good thing. I can't really contribute. I'm tired. You know, So maybe the newness can wear off after a while. And also, Jesus healing, um, for us, we may think, like, if I saw that, I would instantly just, he's the son of God. Um, in their day, there, there are, I mean, there, there is from, from history records of other people who were either healers or claimed to be healers. And just working miracles did not on its own suggest that person must be the Messiah. You know, it, it may suggest they're a great man of God. God is with this person. But they need more to come to the he's the son of God conclusion. So maybe for, for 2,000 years ago, that's also part of it. Uh, as amazing as it is, they, they may stop short of saying he must be the Messiah. You know, perhaps that, that can help there. Nathaniel. I think one of the things that stood out to me the most about this episode was the um, the part when they were talking about how hard it is to be a Jew. And, I yeah. mean, it is so hard to be a Christian. A lot of, of non-Christians just seem to think that, well, you've got the world figured out. You know, you, you know what's going on. You've got the world figured out. It must be so easy to be a Christian. But, you know, yeah. the amount of things that we have to resist and the amount of temptations that we have to resist to not be of the world is so hard. Yeah. And there are so many rules to follow. Yeah. And, and we don't have the world figured out. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, you know, the Jews had quite a bit more specific commandments than we do. But still, what they said can easily apply to the Christian life. And I think there's, there needs to be space to just admit sometimes, this is hard. And it's okay to admit that, you know. Um, because sometimes the, the teachings are just... Some of Jesus' teachings are really hard. And um, sometimes you, you're right that some people may look at Christians and think, well, you've got your belief system, so you think the world just all makes sense. Actually, sometimes precisely because we have the belief system, there are things in the world that all make sense. Or there are things in the scriptures that we haven't figured out yet, you know, things that we're still learning. And so sometimes it actually can create some, uh, some uh, uncertainty instead of certainty. But that can, that's meant, I think, to move us forward in faith. But yeah, sometimes it's hard, and I think it's it's perfectly legitimate to just confess that sometimes. And there's strength. I think we find strength in each other when we say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think it's really. Uh, I don't know if you guys felt that because it was dark and it kind of felt like we were there around the campfire, and just like a part of that conversation. I could totally see myself doing that, like being in that conversation, being frustrated, being upset. And then the Son of God walks by, who's been serving people literally all day. He's probably eaten nothing, drank nothing. His feet are bleeding. He's people's blood on him. And I was just cringing. My heart was just like sinking in my stomach when I was watching that, just imagining, not even really having, having to imagine, because how many times did I complain today? You know, that I was tired or that I was stressed or that, you know, and Jesus is there, hasn't complained, has served all day, has asked for nothing, has given everything. And he is so selfish. And it was just such an eye opener for me to just imagine, like, like if we were living in a Jesus, they would know that this is the Jesus, this person loves Jesus. Our lives would probably look different than they do right now. So it's just, just kind of a, thought feeling and thought to have to just picture the son of God giving so much and what do we what, what, what can that call us to give instead of just complaining about every little thing I think that's, that's a, the episode ended on that note and so that's a good note for us to conclude as well um, I, the disciples at the start they were having some good conversation but clearly there were things they didn't understand. They were focusing on things that Jesus obviously in the moment was not focused on. And as it went on, they started talking about stuff that wasn't good to talk about. And clearly they had taken their eyes off the ball. You know, they had lost what mattered most. Um, and Jesus comes in and it's just a big reminder, oh, he's been doing what matters most. And he's the one we're supposed to be following. Um, 
So that's a good reminder to us. I mean, how easy is it for us 2,000 years later to get really caught up in um, how, th how, pro how things are going to work or, or this issue over here and, and, and make the peripheral things the center? And so that's a good reminder to us to keep, to keep what matters the most as, as what is in our, our direct line of sight. And that's a constant challenge. So I do think that's a good note for us to end on. Uh, thank you again for being here. And I can't remember the episode that's next. So we'll all find out next week what, what episode is coming next. Um, but uh, let's close with a prayer. Thank you, God, for bringing us together tonight. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to see the chosen together. Thank you that we can discuss what was here. Lord, we ask that you bless us. We uh, like your disciples were 2,000, like, like Jesus' disciples were 2,000 years ago, we are on our own uh, walk following Jesus, our own walk with you. And Father, there are perhaps things in our past that we continue to carry with us. There are things about your, you and your word that we don't yet understand. There are insecurities and uncertainties we may have about ourselves now, things about the future we don't know. Uh, Father, we are all too human followers, and we ask that you will see that, that you will bless us in our walks with you, and that you will guide us through your word, through your people, through your spirit within us. You'll guide us in all the ways you've, you've given us, um, just like your son guided his apostles when he was on earth. Father, we ask that um, you will help us to uh, remember our salvation is fully dependent on you, uh, and so is the salvation of everyone around us in Christ. And um, Our past, what we've done, is irrelevant in, in that regard, and uh, we haven't done anything to earn our relationship with you. May those things keep us humble and, and help us to, to love each other more. And Father, we ask that you help us to keep our eyes on, on, on what you direct us towards. Help us to to keep our focus on your will, keep our focus on the things that you say are the greatest commandments, keep our focus on your character, keep us focused on the mission you've given us. And when we get distracted, which we inevitably do, um, we ask that you correct us and bring us back so that we can faithfully be the people you've called us to be. Bless us as we uh, go throughout the rest of this week. In Jesus' name, amen.